Somebody lift up a praise to God for no reason. No music. No music. Matter of fact, y'all worship too. This is what we're here for, to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus, to give glory to the mighty God. Will someone join with me? I just need a few more people to join me. You don't have to stand. You can rock back and forth, but you can at least lift a hand. The Bible says lift, <laughs> oh clap your hands all ye people. I didn't make up clapping, God did. It says, shout to the Lord, to the Lord. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. I didn't tell you to shout, God did. We need to give God what he wants, not what we want. We will not come into his house and give him what we want. We will give God what he wants. Isaiah chapter 9, starting at the sixth verse. How old is your baby? Is that Baker? Okay, I was just making, because that baby's anointed, and I was like, I wasn't sure if you knew it, but now that I realize who it is, you already know that the baby's anointed. I've already prophesied over him. I, but I'm, I'm in a different level of sensitivity because of what I've just experienced. Uh, I understand that what God is doing is global. It is not just for you. It is for the whole world. The whole earth will be filled with his glory. Did you hear what I said? Now, we have elders that are spread out throughout this congregation uh, in each section. I want all of the elders in each section to wave so that you guys will be the, the points of contact for praise in your section. So we're going to do a praise check for each section. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you this. Your posture over the next 25 minutes is going to determine what level of breakthrough you get. Listen to me. The more aggressive you are, the more you're going to get, the more laid back you are then don't get upset if you, you know, if just a couple things happen. But for those of us who don't care what anyone thinks, after an entire year of what God brought us through, I'm not leaving this service on Thanksgiving week without letting God know I thank him for giving me life. I thank him for giving me a measure of health. I thank him for what he has done for me and my family. I may not have everything I want, but I have everything that I need. And I'm not going to give God a half behind prayer. Praise. I'm going to give him a full contact worship. I need some men to open your mouth. I know you can do it. I just watched hundreds of Ghanaian men worship and prayer for four hours in the middle of the night. I want the men of God in here. Loosen your tie, open your mouth, and lift up a sound to the God who you were created in the image of. Don't let the women of God outshout you. The women are always leading when God told you to lead. Yes, he's pouring his spirit out on all flesh, but these women need men of God who will be watchmen on the walls, men of God who will be honorable husbands and fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and leaders. Men, make some noise. Open your mouth.
Kurabande be thanema do shosa bata raba. She anana masu kuraba tere de beti ados. So yanana masu kurabe. Isaiah chapter 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the administration of power, will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called. Watch this, his name, not his names are. It's one name. Five different expressions of the same name because one word couldn't contain all he is so his name shall be called name not s it's not different names it's not a separate person it's one person with five names his name will be called wonderful wonderful i wish i wish somebody's grandmother was in here he, he they say he's a one to my is there anybody that ever anybody is he a wonder you serve the mighty God wonderful counselor I need you to look that's a capital C counselor is the, the synonymous with the Holy Ghost we have a, 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 a prophetic picture of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit right here in Isaiah 9. It is declaring the birth of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the, the prophesied Messiah. But the Messiah alone in baby form is not enough. You got to have the Holy Spirit, the counselor. Wonderful counselor. Watch this next name. Mighty God. Mighty God, not soft, not tender, not docile, not passive aggressive, not one of multiple gods, the only true and living, all powerful, mighty God. And just in case you didn't know what else he is, he's the everlasting father. from eternity the everlasting father then this one throws me off prince of peace maybe you haven't been watching the news but our nation needs peace I wish I had help in the balcony I wish I had a thousand people who were praying our nation needs peace now, I'm not talking about peaceful protest and marching with signs. We need a spirit of peace that makes devils bow down. We need a spirit of peace to arrest demonic principalities in heavenly places. We see that the enemy is trying to drag our nation back into hell, but the body of Christ must stand in the gap and say, not so. What better place than in a church with multiple races and ethnicities headed by a black man in a southern city where God has allowed people from around the world to converge in one place to lift up the name of Jesus? Could it be that the answer to what the government cannot get right, what municipalities cannot get right, what city council members cannot get right, what mayors and senators and presidents and judges cannot get right, the body of Christ is to be the example we need the mighty God the Prince of Peace how you gonna be the everlasting father and the Prince of Peace how you gonna be the king and the Prince unless the Father Son and Holy Ghost are one Isaiah says counselor Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We know that this scripture is a foreshadowing of Jesus, who is the fullness, the Bible says, of the Godhead bodily. He's the Mighty God. I want to draw your attention to that word, Mighty, because the topic of my message 
The title is Certified Mighty. Certified Mighty. You can be seated. Over the next 23 minutes or so, you are more than welcome to shout at your leisure, to fist bump, to high five your neighbor, because I'm only going to be talking about one aspect of an infinite amount of possibilities of the attributes of God, and it is the mighty power of God. Mighty. We talk about God being good. God is good. And all the time, and we go to certain churches, they'll walk up and the church mother have her hat and she'll grab a mic and she'll say, praise the Lord, saints. And you'll say, and you'll say, praise the Lord back. Uh, I said, praise the Lord, saints. Now, what's funny is we use it as a greeting, but it's a command. It's not, hello, how are you? Praise the Lord is open your mouth and give God a praise because he deserves it. So I'm going to say it again, but then I need you to do it. Don't talk back to me. When I say praise the Lord, I need you to go straight up and do not care who's around you. And when I say praise, I didn't say tender clap. I said praise. That means you might need to scare the neighbor on the other side of your pew. Ladies and gentlemen, God's been too good to you for 10 and a half months for you to sit on him today. Praise the Lord. The Bible says praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Some of you are saying, I don't know how to praise because I'm depressed. You get a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You want that thing to lift off? Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I got a runner. He got on a suit jacket too. He doesn't care because God has done something in his life that's worth getting out of your comfort zone. King David said, you don't like how I praise? I'll be even more undignified than this. You embarrassed? I'm going to embarrass you some more because God has been too good to me to let this moment pass. I'm going to praise the Lord. Holy Ghost! Praise ye the Lord. Don't stop. We get tired after three minutes. In the Old Testament, they would lay prostrate until the cloud lifted. Face in the dirt because that's the level of reverential awe that our God deserves. He is mighty. Do you know who you serve? You serve the inexhaustible one, the many breasted one. You serve the omnipotent one, the omniscient one, the all knowing Father. In the yellow, in the third row, in the balcony, do you have any clue the power of God that's at work in your life? God has his hand on you, young one, and I want to encourage you. I'm speaking to the, 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 the red sweatsuit with the white letters on it. Bulls. Let me tell you something. The blood of bulls and goats could not satisfy the righteous requirement of the law. And so God had to send himself in the form of a baby to be the propitiation or full payment of our sin. He's a mighty God. Ah, the angel said the whole earth is full of his glory. He's a mighty God. When he sits on the throne, his train fills the temple. He's unstoppable. 
who counsels him, who stops him, who tells him what direction to go in. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God, awesome in power, awesome in wonder. He drinks up offerings by fire. He's a mighty God. The Bible says he speaks and entire galaxies and planets, exoplanets and stars are formed. And the Bible says he calls them all by name. You serve a mighty God. He names the stars and tells them to keep shining until I say not to. You serve a mighty God. You think you just landed on planet Earth? You can't get here. You have to be spoken into this place. You are the idea of heaven. You serve a mighty God. He spoke out of eternity and made you. I wish I had just a few more people to help me. I thought this was my intro. This might be my outro because it's not a lot left to say about a mighty God. I'm tired of us making people bigger than God, making devils bigger than God, making doctors bigger than God, making sickness bigger than God, making your checking account bigger than God. You better make all of that bow down and lift Jesus up. For if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He's a mighty God. No devil in hell stands a chance against our God. The mighty God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. 147... Psalm 147 says his understanding is infinite. Oh! The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. I don't know who, who's been wicked to you, but I just need you stop looking up here because they about to be down here. He cast the wicked down to the ground. I know it looks like they floating and flying and doing well, but I need you to keep watching because the very ones that thought they were passing you are about to be brought down by the hand of God. You don't have to do it. Don't say anything to them. You stay faithful to God. Stay in prayer to God. Stay in worship of God and watch God handle the wicked. Come down, devil. I'm waiting on that sound. There's a sound that's supposed to break in here today. Our God is inexhaustible. He's unsearchable. How do you serve a God that's ancient but doesn't age? God has no gray beard. He doesn't age. He lives in a constant state of I amness. He is eternal. He, he lives in himself. He needs nothing. He is self-sustained. He doesn't plug in so that he can get power. He is power. He is all powerful. So anybody that has power got it from him and he's only lending it to him. Woo! Somebody shout, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody know we serve a wonderful God? Yeah, we say wonderful, but I, I love that, that the scripture, Manoah, who was Samson's father in the book of Judges, in the 13th chapter, when the angel of the Lord, which is a pre-incarnate version of Jesus, he, he shows up to declare that they're going to have a son. He'll be a Nazarite, which means no razor should touch his head. And Manoah says, I believe you, but what, what's your name? The angel of the Lord said, why do you ask me my name? Seeing that it is wonderful. What an unbelievable holy, and I feel like throwing the mic. He said, I, I, I could tell you my name, but it's wonderful. 
When you study that word wonder, it means incomprehensible, beyond your ability to process. I could tell you my name, but your mind wouldn't even be able to categorize. If I said my name, if I told you all that I am, if I revealed who I am, you wouldn't even be able to stand. If you don't believe me, check the Garden of Gethsemane when they said, we've come to arrest Jesus. He says, I am he. And they fell back and worshiped before they arrested him, not because they wanted to, but because they had to, because they were in the presence of the mighty God. Why do you ask my name? Seeing that my name is wonderful, you couldn't comprehend it. Your little finite brain would fall right out of your earlobe. So I'm just going to let you know that the word will come to pass. I'm here to declare that every word that has been spoken over you and your family is coming to pass. And I'm not talking in 2025. I'm talking baby right now. There are 17 people in this room whose lives have forever been altered because you gave a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Mighty God. Somebody say, Mighty God. Yeah, somebody up there is getting free. That's right. See, I miss the days when one of the church mothers would just think about what God did. Ah! Worthy! Somebody's grandmother, tears just streaming down her face. You don't even know what part of her life she's talking about. She's, Thank you! I wish we had people that were grateful and you'll just look back over some random moment in your life and realize I should have been dead 22 years ago. But God, but God kept me. I should have never survived that relationship. But God kept I should have never survived that situation. But God kept me. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Do you know why you're still alive? Because the mighty God told the weak devil the answer is no. We always want the yes of God, but you need to be praising him right now for the no. Jesus said, Peter, Satan has asked for you, but I prayed for you. Do you know that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession? Do you know the enemy has come and asked for you? And Jesus said, no, Father, don't let it happen. Some of y'all in the balcony didn't hear what I said. You're alive. Not because you're good or because you're amazing. It's because God said no to the devil's request. Now the sermon's almost over and some of you are going to shout on this. Why would the devil ask for you by name? It's 8 billion people in the world. Why is he worried about you? Because you're this close. You're this close, and even hell knows if I don't get them now, I'll never get them. If they get past this moment, I won't have anything to latch on to. Some of you have been crying, feeling like something's being torn away. It's not that you're being torn away from something. God is elevating you and stuff is falling off of you. There are some principalities that can't stay in your life. Do you realize there are some addictions that have left your life in this service that you didn't even pray for? You just went higher and the higher you go, some stuff has to stay where it was. Somebody ought to give the mighty God a great praise. MJ, he's a mighty God. He takes the humble and lifts them high. He takes the last and makes them first. He takes the poor and enriches them not only with financial resources, but with spiritual truth and godly wisdom and supernatural discernment. See, it's not enough to have money. There's a lot of people that have money and you'll lose money if you don't have wisdom. 
Oh my God. Some of y'all, the reason why what you're believing for hasn't come is because you asked for the thing, not the thing that'll sustain the thing if the thing shows up. Don't ask for the money, ask for wisdom. Give me wisdom to steward the trillions that are coming. By this time next year, the entire sanctuary will be completely renovated and restored and refurbished. I, I see us expanding, and I know this is a time of contraction in the spirit. Smaller buildings, smaller crowds because of COVID, and nothing will ever be the same. None of y'all are hearing from God. In the last days, he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Why would I make something small when he's trying to get everybody in? If anything, this is our youth building. This is too small for what God wants to do do. I feel like God wants to give us that arena downtown. I feel like walking down there with a little oil on my right hand and just put my hand on it the same way I put my hand on this when everybody said we wouldn't have this but I served a mighty God and I didn't have money and I didn't have status but I had a prayer life and I got on my face and I prayed to God and I said God you brought me here and if you brought me here establish me here and with a mighty hand with a mighty hand, with a mighty hand, he delivered me. He's mighty. We serve the mighty God. It is true, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Have you not studied New Testament scripture? When Jesus would show up, devils would bow down. Please don't torment us. Please, whatever you do, oh, send us into the pigs. Here you are the Lord. You're the Holy One of Israel. He'd say, shut up. I won't receive worship from you. I'm gonna cast you right out of here. Jesus didn't argue with devils. Excuse me, could you please come out of that little boy? Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Loose here. Ephrathah be opened. Talitha Kuma. Little girl, I say to you, arise. This is a God who's mighty. All he has to do is speak and inanimate things are awakened. Son of man, can these bones live? I don't know. Prophesy. Open your mouth and speak. The same power that I have to declare a thing is in your mouth. Some of y'all are one declaration away from your whole life changing. Oh, Lord. Somebody say mighty God. Right now, we need the mighty God. In our society, we need the mighty God. After the verdict in Wisconsin, we need a mighty God. Brunswick, Georgia, that'll be next week. We're going to need a mighty God. We, we watched Julius Jones hours from execution, and God turned it around. We, we, we need the mighty God to war on our behalf. This is the truth. My wife will tell you that we were advocating for the leaders in Oklahoma to reconsider the decision. And while I was in Ghana, I was in a dead sleep. And the Spirit of God said, life without parole. I stood up, literally out of a dead sleep. He said, that's what's going to happen. I called all the people who should know. They said, it doesn't look good. It's over. They're going to let the clock run out. I said, that's not what the Lord told me. He said life without parole. That's the next step. It ain't the final step. But it's enough to stop the clock. I don't know who this is for. You want him to finish it. He just stopped the clock. I need 30 people to get this. You thought he was done. It's not done. He just stopped the clock. He's not finished. It's not a period. It's a comma. You're dealing with the mighty God. See, God sets up devils to expose them. The, oh! The Bible says Jesus made an open mockery, an open spectacle of the devil, disarming principalities, 
That means he, he took their skirt off and showed you they're impotent. So then all of a sudden, I got a text that his sentence was commuted to life without parole. And God told me before it was announced because he doesn't do anything without speaking to his servant, the prophet, first. I want you to know I serve a mighty God. And I'm grateful because I'm called to raise up mighty warriors. If you go to this church, you have a different spirit than some of the other places that you and I have grown up in. Some, some places where we grew up is safe, it's familiar, it's easy. But here, you got to make a commitment to come here. You got to, you got to be like, this is my church. Because, you know, they talk about it. You know, you, you go to over there with them pastors, over there with the lady. She got braids and tattoos. Yep. And with that pastor, you know, because, you know, I heard, yeah, whatever you heard don't matter. The Holy Ghost is over there. And you don't have to go. But this is where we go. Because God, me ah! God meets us here. Notice they always talking about us, but we ain't never talking about them. Because when God has elevated you, what you talking about? What you left. And what's left when you know what's right. Somebody say mighty God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people that don't like you. And it's because of the God that's backing you. They may not like you, but they show the heck can't stop you. You better get this mic out of my, I was close. I was close, I'm sleepy. So I, 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 they can't stop you. They sure as heck can't stop you. So you might as well smile while you're walking. You might as well wave at them while they texting, while they typing, while they're DMing, because there's nothing that anyone can do about what God has declared over your life because you serve the mighty God. Somebody shout mighty. That's all I got to say today. I don't have no 35 points. I don't have no illustrations. I don't have no animation. I'm not doing a liturgical dance. I'm here to tell you that you serve the mighty God. Well, what about, what are your thoughts on the on the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. What are your thoughts on the Ahmaud Arbery situation? What are your thoughts on the January 6th commission? Romans 13, all authority is set up by God. And when their time is up, God gonna take the power back. I respect government and judges and I respect senators and council people and mayors and presidents, but all of them have temporary power. God has all power. And I'm just going to keep serving the Lord. And when it's time for us to stand up, we will. But we're not standing on issues. We're standing on kingdom principles. Because the greatest display of unity is for people from different backgrounds to all come under one flag and say, yeah, I'm white and he's black. I'm Republican. He's Democrat. I'm conservative. They're more liberal, but we serve the same Jesus and go to the same church. And that to me is the power of a mighty God. And we will stand for injustice and cruelty and dishonor wherever we find it. And that's not a color. Did you hear what I said? That's not a color. Injustice is not a color. Injustice is not the only for black people. There are poor white people that experience injustice as well. There are Hispanic families that experience injustice as well. There are people in every subsection of life and the body of Christ cannot get distracted by the politics of the day and miss the fact that we serve a mighty God who is above all of it. Somebody say the mighty God. Well, uh, what makes God so mighty, Pastor John? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked while you're holding the baby up on your lap. I see you're trying to walk on the pews. I see it. He's a sweet girl. She got her barrette right here in the head of I see her. 
What makes God so mighty? First of all, his immutability. He does not change. He cannot change. He was holy yesterday. He was holy 10 trillion years ago. He was holy before you knew what holy was. He is the living God. He is the mighty God. He is, he is, he is, he is not only immutable, he does not change, he cannot change. He's also omniscient, omniscience. He knows all things. He is the perfect mathematical equation. He is God. He understands all things. His understanding is unsearchable. This is the God who made a planet with his mouth. How you take nothing and make everything? Because I'm mighty. When you're mighty, everything has to do what you tell it to do. Oh, we serve a mighty God. Not only is he omniscient, knows all things, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. This is why your future is secure because even though you're not there, he is. You better preach, John Gray. I'm going to have to lean over for a second because the jet lag is catching up to me. Uh, I'm almost done, but did you hear what I said? He's omnipresent. He's in your present and he's omni. He is in your past and in your future. At the same time. At the same time. Processing your real-time decisions to determine your next. That's why I said your praise right now is not just for right now, it's for what's coming. That's why I said if I were you, I'd get some timber. I'd get some timber up. I'd get a sound in the air. Will, you told me God was sending me to Ghana, and then I got an invitation to Ghana. Now I'm coming back. So you, you, you get a part of the inheritance of what God did in Ghana. So I speak that over you and Kelly now, that the prophetic mantle that's on you has increased tenfold in the name of Jesus, and you will see what you've never seen. And uh, Watch this. I, it was, ooh, this was really strange. It's almost like I saw you throw something out of your hand, and it was like light, light came out of your hands in a particular direction which means God's allowing you to strike the ground and as you strike the ground the wealth and the riches and the honor that are to be bestowed upon you is going to come upon you you got to strike the ground you got to strike the ground you got to strike the ground there's there's power in your hands there's light in your bosom and there's healing and prophetic declaration when you lay your hands on it it will be if you lay your hands on the sick they will recover if you lay your hands on a house it'll be yours if you lay your hands on a commercial property it will become yours you have stepped into the season of no delay there is no delay between what you say and what God does I'm telling you even as your hair is flowing I'm telling you that the oil will flow and I declare that the children are coming, a boy and a girl. God is going to do it. He is mighty and faithful to do it. But you will have a legacy, a daughter to walk down the aisle and a son to walk in your ways. I need somebody to give the mighty God a praise. He's omniscient, omnipresent, he's compassionate, he's merciful, and he's filled with glory. And I love that he's omnipotent. Omnipotent. In the spirit, he don't shoot blanks. When he speaks it, it's going to get birth. Did you hear what I said? Uh, if there's anybody that's got seed in the ground, you need to get excited because God's about to allow his omnipotence to agree with what you've sown. And your harvest is going to be so vast that if you're not really mature, it's going to scare you. Some of y'all about to be so blessed, you're almost going to say the wrong thing like, what's what something bad's about to happen. You ever been so blessed, you're like, he going to take it back. He going to snatch the rug from under my feet. Like Charlie Brown trying to kick the football and Lucy always snatch it away. Can I tell you God's about to bless you so crazy? Don't do what you normally do like, what's the catch? There is no catch. It's just your season. 
I said, there is no catch. It's your season. It's your time. Now I need six people other than that man of God. That's somebody new running. There's another one. I need about four more people. It's do not ask God is this really for me? The answer is yes. You're going to see some of it this week. Some of y'all are going to see your yes before Thanksgiving. Some of y'all are going to see the financial change before Thanksgiving. Your crypto account is going to go up before Thanksgiving. I need somebody to hear me. You're sitting on billions of dollars of wealth and God's going to take it up this week, this week, this week, because we serve the mighty God and God has to establish his covenant with his people. Somebody say the mighty God. The mighty God deserves a mighty devotion. Is there anybody that's devoted to God? God, I'll do what you say. I'll spend time. I love Jesus. said, listen, this is an all or nothing proposition. I want it all or nothing at all. Thomas, in, the, in, in John 11, when they were going to, uh, Jesus was going to raise Lazarus, they thought Jesus was going to be in harm's way. Thomas said, let's go with him so we can die when he does. He's all in. See, that's, I like that. And over there in Ghana, that prophet had people that were willing to die for the oil. Even, even in the days of David, they said, you're worth more than 10,000. Go sit down, David. We're raising up mighty men. And I declare that this church is raising up men and women of God who understand the prophetic moment that we're in. We're raising up... We're raising up a church full of intercessors and prayer warriors and entrepreneurs, million dollar businesses, hundred million dollar businesses, billion dollar valuations. I declare it and prophesy because you messing with the mighty God right now. Don't play with it. The mighty God is backing you. Everybody say all or nothing. Then that requires a mighty commitment. Say commit to it. The commitment is not to just showing up on Sunday. The commitment is to praying Monday through Sunday. I said a boy and a girl, Kelly, and I meant it. And I see all of her hair, just all this hair and these beautiful eyes. I see it just as clear as day. Somebody say commit to it. Don't just come here on Sunday. Don't just check it off your box. Oh, I went to church. I did what I was supposed to do. No, 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 no. I saw hundreds of men praying between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. in Ghana. What's our excuse? If I could get 100 men to pray with me for an hour, the entire nation would change. Let's do it then. I'm going to announce it. I'm going to let you have your Thanksgiving. Next week, I'm going to tell y'all, meet me up here. I'm going to tell you the time, and I want all the men. And we going after God. Huh. And you know what's going to happen. The women going to sneak up there. Because you know, we've been waiting on, you know, we pray too. Y'all have been praying. Y'all been birthing things that we were supposed to declare. Let God speak with the men. We'll, we'll include y'all. Y'all pray for us at the house, but the men need to come together. The devil's been scattering men, telling us we're weak and we're impotent and have no authority, but we are the created image of God. And when the men of God get together, when the men of God start praying, every devil in Greenville has to go. I'm talking about a God that can restore marriages. What am I they say? A mighty God deserves a mighty devotion, a mighty commitment, and finally, a mighty praise. Yeah. Tiffany, they missed that one. I love, that's how my grandma, just right there. That's, that's, that's a grandma right there. Somebody, I said a mighty God deserves a mighty praise. If he was a small God, you give him small praise. If he was a medium God, you give him medium praise. But, but cool breeze, he's a mighty God. Somebody ought to join me in giving him a mighty praise. I said, give him a mighty praise. Pray for me. Pray for me. 
I said he's a mighty God. I need somebody to pray for me because the whole time I was in Ghana, I did well. And last night, I think I, I grabbed some food that wasn't all the way cooked. And I feel it right now. And I said, it's either sickness or the devil wants me to shut up. But either one is not going to get authority right now. I need somebody to pray. I got, I got three more points. Somebody say we serve the mighty God. That's the lesson for today. Did you, what's, his, what's his name? Mighty. mighty. Mighty God. I want you to get a postcard. Put it in your car. Put it in the bathroom mirror on the side. Put it in a post-it note. Put it a sticky on your refrigerator. Mighty God. I need you to get that in your spirit. And anytime something looks bigger than what you can handle, you need to say mighty God. Because the word mighty also means giant, which means whatever's big, he's bigger than that. Do I have some help in here? Say it again. Mighty God. Watch this. So if God is mighty and he is with you, because Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, he's the fullness of the God. If he's in you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So if God is mighty, then how should you now look at your enemies? How should you look at your debt? How should you look at the prophetic words that have been declared over your life? Well, I don't see it yet. And, and my account hasn't changed, but you serve the mighty God. And God specializes in taking those who were low and bringing them high. Those who were invisible and putting them on the main stage. Moses was stuttering and in the middle of a desert, God says, him. David was the last of eight brothers, didn't even get invited. God said him. I wish I had some help in here. God, God will take what other people see no value in and say them, her, that family. I wish I had some help that God actually pointed you out because of what you didn't have. Stupid Goliath, you thought you was going up against David. You was going up against the mighty God. Stupid Jezebel, you weren't going up against a prophet. You were going up against the mighty God. You would have left him alone if you were at the mouth of the cave when God says, stand out here, I'm going to pass by. Earthquake, lightning, rocks crashing, and then here comes the whisper. I'm so mighty, I don't have to yell. I can whisper. How come your enemy's eyes get big when they see you? Because they're not just looking at you, they're looking at who's behind you. I, I wish I had about 10 more people to shout like my elder down here. Yes, sir. I feel God on that. They're not just looking at you. They're looking at who's behind you. See, uh, that's the mighty God. Who is that with him? Oh, that's the mighty God. Yeah, you messed with the wrong one. I told you if you didn't leave me alone, I was going to tell my daddy. I dare somebody say, I'm going to tell my daddy on you. Don't make God get off his throne. Don't make him get off his throne. Don't make... You now watching the throne. Don't let him get in his own. Don't let him get in his own. Don't let him get in his own. You are now watching the throne. So let me get in my zone. Just, just leave me alone. They never saw you coming. They underestimated you for years. And now here you are at the precipice of everything God promised. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. The word might there is not the same as mighty God. What he is saying is your power can't do it. Mine, on the other hand. You need to get a picture of all your debt before Thanksgiving. Get it on a piece of paper. And I need you to yell at the paper, mighty God. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit just told me to tell you this. Get all your debt on a piece of paper. 
And then I want you to talk to the paper and say, you are not bigger than my God. My God is mighty and you are canceled. Did you hear what I said? I dare you to write mighty God on all your debt. Now, finally, some of you have been waiting on a fulfillment of a prophecy. It has yet to come to pass. It's because there's been spiritual interference, demonic opposition, pushing against the word of the Lord. Today, with the next shout that we lift up, I, I believe and I'm praying that Michael, the archangel, will ride out of heaven and push through the atmosphere and give us an open heaven. But I need somebody that believes that God can do it. I need there to be a sound to a mighty God that causes him to send his angels to move on our behalf. I need one person on every road to press like everybody else on your road is counting on you not to quit right now. The mighty God. The mighty God. His power is unsearchable. No devil in hell can stop him. And he is your Abba Father. He's not just the God of the universe. He's your father. You serve the mighty God. If you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus. Come to the altar. You want to be a member of our church, come to the altar. Don't wait. There's somebody that needs to give their life to Jesus and some people need to join this church. Don't wait, just here he comes. There's the first fruit. Come on, God. Who else? Who else? There are others. Come on down, my man. Look at this young man. Don't let him walk by himself. I love it. I love it. Right here, man. They're not the only one. Somebody else needs to make, there it is. Elders go up and down. Today is a harvest day. Bring that, bring that mighty man. Who else? Somebody else. Somebody else needs to make their way here. Who else? I bet you if you clap, they'll come. Some of y'all are saying, I think I'm good. If you think you're good, you're not. You got to know it. Come to the altar. Get it right. Make sure you're right with God. Online, declare, save. Text save to the number that's on the screen. Text member if you want to be a member and you're already saved. Somebody else needs to come to this altar. I'm not playing with you. You know exactly who you are. I will come out there and get you. 
I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Make your move. Here they come. Hey, somebody else over here. Somebody else over here. Is that you? Oh, my God. Is the baby coming? She's accepting her calling in the ministry. I know it. God has taken this baby to a high place. Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh-oh, here they come. And she bringing the baby. Somebody else coming? Elders, don't let anybody walk by themselves. Elders, some more are coming. I want y'all to bum rush this side, wherever they coming from. Video game. I don't think y'all understand what God is doing down here. Scoot over a little bit. Let's pray this prayer. Where's James? James, it's okay. Come on, stand next to your wife and baby girl. Hallelujah. To my family that came from Atlanta, blessings and favor on you. Blessings and favor on you and your house. The drive up was a sacrifice. God watched it. And what I sense in my spirit is there are three significant areas of prayer focus that you've been believing for. God says you can mark them as done. Whatever those, the top three things that you've been worried about, concerned about, or trying to figure out. One, I heard the Lord say, the first one is a yes. And then the other two are open doors. But the answer is, is in your favor so you can check them off the box the things that you've been praying for because he said yes I need somebody to get excited with them because if you can agree with them God is going to release it over your life as well I want everybody to pray this prayer I want y'all to know that you all are the first fruit of a new anointing that I carry. You are the first fruit of an anointing that I carry. This is new. This is new. When I saw this baby come up here with this shirt on, I said, I know hell is mad. But this is a world leader right here. That's what, that's what you are. All that charisma, personality, the looks, the smile. It's a miracle. Look at this baby right here. World leader. I'm sitting here looking at the smartest young woman in the entire state. You're unstoppable. Your creativity is inexhaustible. You can write poems, books, songs. You can create stories, scripts, drama. Then you're brilliant academically. You're a straight A student. Whether it's fully manifested or not, there's nothing that can stop you. And don't let anybody take you backwards. You don't follow crowds. The crowd follows you. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, 
come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family. Not only are you saved, but you're now filled and you're a part of the Relentless Church. We're walking this way. Come on, let's go. We're walking this way. We're walking this way. Let's celebrate our family as they go. Look at this. Can we celebrate Relentless? And if any of you all are in need of baptism, please don't forget, December 1st, December 1st, Pursuit Night will be in our baptism. Amen. God bless you, Relentless. Have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed by the word of the Lord, mighty God? Hallelujah. God bless you. Celebrate. Let's celebrate them as they go. Jesus. Now may the Lord bless and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, show you his favor, give you his peace. God bless you, Relentless, and we will see you next week. Hallelujah.